Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So I wanted to go through a, a simple part example. This came in from a customer. It's an IGES file. You know, when we take a look at the part, we have a solid model. We have some wireframe. Uh, we have a, a profile. And then on the other side, we have a, a slot with, um, with an undercut. Okay. So we want to look at some of the steps that we would take to get started. Uh, generally, what I'll do is create a layer and I'll take the solid and move that solid over to its own layer you know and then I'll create another layer and then I'll select um, everything else here now this is the same color as my background so first I'll change the color over and then I'll select it all and move it over to its own layer so we have the solid on one layer and we have wireframe on the other okay so we have the basic uh, shape of the part now. The next thing I want to do is uh, create a new job. We're going to run the stock wizard. We're going to choose this outside shape as our stock. So we're going to pick geometry and then shift left click to pick up that shape. Now from here, we need to uh, add some, uh, some thickness. So I'm going to make this a, a quarter inch. Okay, that's the thickness of the part. And if you look at the part from a front view, you can see see the top of the part. You can see there's a little bit of a taper on here. And then uh, you can, uh, you, really what I'm trying to look at is where the part is positioned in Z. So what, I wanna center it in the stock. So I'm gonna change my origin here for half the stock thickness. Oops. So then now the, the part is um, centered in the stock. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is set where my zero is. Uh, in this case, I'm going to pick my origin as this bottom corner over here, and then I'll choose OK. All right, so we have the, the part set up. All right, we have the stock set up. We have the zero set up. The next thing that we want to look at is uh, to machine this. So when we're looking at... Uh, when we're looking at this part, we want to look at the different features that we machine into it. Uh, in this setup here, really, uh, we have a profile around the outside of the part, and then we have a, a slight taper of the part. So that's uh, one setup. When we flip it over and we do the other side, you know, uh, we have the taper on this side, and then we also have this. Um, this slot feature that we need to machine. Now, because we have both the wireframe and the solid, the solid we're gonna use for 3D machining, the wireframe we're gonna use for 2D machining, okay? So probably the easiest thing to do is to lay down the 2D tool path. So let's look at uh, how we can do that. I'm gonna turn the solid off, okay? And in here we have our wireframe. So from here, I'm gonna load a two axis routine and I'm gonna select the wireframe. All right, now I can um, pick how deep I want it to cut. This is gonna be, you know, let's say it's a quarter inch stock that's gonna go all the way through the part. And then as far as my machining strategy, I have a, a profile rough. That's all I wanna use at this point. Uh, set the tool size I'm gonna use, set my speeds and feeds that I wanna run with, um, compensation, stock allowance, lead in and lead out and then we can go ahead and compute this. Now to begin with, you can see how the tool is cutting on the wrong side of the geometry. We want it on the outside, so we'll change our start point and go to modify start point and then choose where we want it to start cutting from in the direction and then go ahead and recompute the tool path. So now we have a profile to cut around the part. Pretty easy to do. Let's go ahead and run this through a simulation. So inside of the simulation, we can see the tool path cuts around the part and it actually cuts the part free. Unfortunately, that's not really gonna work for us because we need to hold the part in another routine. So a couple of things that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna sketch some holes. Uh, all right, so we'll do one here and we'll do one here. Uh, what I'm going to use these holes for is when I flip the part over, I want to be able to align the part again. So I'm going to um, machine these holes. 
let me remove this geometry and reselect here this one and this one I'm gonna machine them all the way through let me go to a vertical and compute so I'm gonna machine those all the way through and those are gonna be my alignment holes so when I flip the part over I can pick up my zero again because I'll know exactly where the part is so that's the first thing then uh, let's go ahead and copy this feature again and then paste it so now as far as this profile if I select the whole thing and compute it again uh, you know I want to change my start position so let's go here go in that direction and compute this is gonna cut around the part but I don't really want it to cut uh, all the way down to the bottom I want to leave stock uh, we could generate tabs if we wanted but in this case I want to leave stock so I'm going to change what my uh, depth is okay so my top of stock is a quarter inch and my bottom of stock we're gonna make point two and compute so now that's gonna leave uh, some stock on the bottom of the part let's go ahead and run this through a simulation again all right so we can slow this down a little bit so we got our two uh, two alignment holes for when we flip over the part and then now we're running around the outside of the part and uh, as you can see we ha we still have stock there okay so now what I want to do from here is I want to uh, profile the part so I'm gonna use a 3d routine alright so if I'm gonna do a 3d routine I'm gonna pick up the solid now there's a couple of a couple of ways we can do this um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unstitch the model into surfaces like such and then I'm gonna uh, unst um, untrim the surface which will give me a plane and uh, the reason why I'm doing this is I want the tool path to extend past the model here let me let me undo this for a second and let me uh, uh, lay down some cutter paths so we'll do three axis select the model we're gonna do a slice planer which is just a back and forth we'll load up a, a ball mill this is gonna be zero degrees our step over all right and then let's compute this so this is gonna give me a back and forth toolpath on the model but the the problem with that is uh, the edge of the tool is going to be right on the edge of the surface so I want it to extend past the edge of the surface a little bit so I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna extract the wireframe for this top surface here let me do this as a different color okay so now that I've done that I'm gonna unstitch the model well here let me uh, turn these other things off let me blank all my tool path out let me offset this by some amount I'm gonna say a hundred thou alright that looks good now I'll go back to my solid I'm gonna unstitch the solid from there I'm going to untrim the surface the untrimmed surface I'm gonna extend out so I'll do surface extend uh, probably not one inch I'll just make it a quarter inch so I'm gonna extend the surface out on all sides okay now I'm going to break the surface so I'm gonna break that surface with that offset okay from here I can get rid of the outside shape so now I've given that additional boundary uh, to machine. So when I come in and load my uh, planar routine and recompute, it's going to cut past the edge of the part, which is what I want. Now I can adjust my step over as necessary uh, to uh, get the scallop that I'm looking for on the part. So let's go ahead and run this through the simulation. Okay, so from here we have our alignment holes for our dowels we have our profile for the outside of our geometry and then we have our planar toolpath to go back and forth 
to put the taper on this blade. Now, I don't think I want to run it in this order. When I'm doing the 3D tool path, I, I kind of want to uh, have as much rigidity in the part as possible. So what I want to do is change the sequence of this routine. So I'm going to swap these two here. Now, by just moving up the operation in the tree, that should change the order. You may want to check your machining order to make sure it's set by individual feature so that it cuts in the order that is in the tree. Let's run it through a simulation and see what's going on. All right. So we cut our down holes and we run our planar tool path and then now we are profiling around the part and leaving stock for finish on the bottom now as far as for optimization I think I want to change it one more time and use the three axis routine first uh, that way we can eliminate tool changes so it starts with the ball mill once the ball mill is done uh, cutting the part, then we uh, create our dowel holes. We could drill those as well, but that's fine. And now we're cutting around the part. So this would give us uh, our first setup. The next thing we'd want to look at is going into the second setup, and we'll pick that up in the next video. If you guys have any questions, comments, or feedback, please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, we'll see you then.